yeah, Nikov's ELO is just incredible. Guys, we're, we're casting a 1v1 here between two new civilizations. High-level players, but we've got freaking Nikov at 25.57 ELO. I think he's number one in the world on the ladder right now. Then you've got Margu, who's like top 50 at 22.98. That is quite a gap right there. Now, guys, as much as we could look at Nikov and say, ooh, ah, Nikov, you're so good. You're so incredible. No, that's not what this is about. It's all about the Gurjaras, okay? I want to look at Margu's build here because we just saw a game an hour ago with this, and he's continuing to play the Gurjaras and learn this. And I think of all the new civilizations and the Dynasties of India expansion, I think that this is getting slept on a little bit. I really do. I, I saw it on my Discord server. I saw it on Reddit. People are just like, yeah, it's not really that good. But the reason they don't think it's that good is because of the numbers. And Spirit of the Law crunched the numbers. He's the go-to guy on that. And he said that basically it's like, eh, like one villager, one and a half villagers on food. If you've got you know everything in there. But here's the thing. Getting additional villager on food right away is really strong. So I, I saw Margu play this earlier. I actually think this eco, even on Arabia, not even maps like Ghost Lake where you've got additional uh, herdables out there, I really think this can be strong. So what do you get with Gurjaras to review? You get two forage bushes at the start. And then again, if you garrison your herdables, you get... Uh, resource income. So he's got six here. That's like one villager on food, if I'm not mistaken. It's about to be eight, which is a bit more than that. Immediately after, so it was it was four villagers on food at the start, and then the mill, and three on straggler trees. And now the boar gets brought in right around the time the forge bush completes. So the timing here for Margu, this is a build order, ladies and gents. Like this, this is a build order, and this is looking crisp already for him. Um. The timing is there for the house. The timing is there for him to now make a lumber camp. Margu has been practicing this, which is why I wanted to watch this. And Margu's got it down. And I think you could go for some crazy things here. Now, I mentioned before, you know, it's like you get up to feud late so fast on an open map like Arabia. And that makes a big difference. So we'll look over at Nikov. Now, Nikov... These are the reworked Indians, so that he does have the cheaper Vils and Dark Age, Feudal Age, Castle Age, Imp. Um, but that does not necessarily translate to a light and fast uptime. Uh, do they last longer on the garrison? That's super strong. I'm, I'm not sure what you mean when you say last longer on the garrison. Are you asking if they get eaten within the mill? Because the answer is no. Damn, that's a morbid thought. <laughs> It's like the donkey running around in a circle is just grinding up the the llamas. <laughs> that is a morbid thought. No, no, no. Stay in there indefinitely. They are not being eaten in there. <laughs> I don't know if that's what you meant, but that's actually hilarious to think about. Okay. Um. Well, Boars gets brought in. Now, I saw Margu do 18 pop, or maybe it was 19 pop earlier. I'm curious. Wow, this is... So it's not going to be quite as fast, guys. But economically, it is going to be really strong, I think. Okay, looks like he wants to go for a barracks. So he's still able to go for man-at-arms. Meanwhile, Nikov's rushing. Okay, this is the problem. This was the problem with Margu before as well. Is that you have to push in some of your deer and you have to get all your hunt. And that he hasn't found the opponent. This would not be the area of your base you'd want to lose. Will Margu notice this and react? Because if the barracks gets denied, I don't get ex I don't. I'm not too happy. Uh, 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 no content ruined. Content ruined. No, Nikov, you nerd. But uh, Loom is in now, so the villagers are not going to be threatened as much. Run away with that one. Ah, oh, that makes me sad. Wow, such great timing on the attack from Nikov. He was fortunate enough to find his opponent. They are very close to each other. And now you have no choice but to finish your barracks. So you've got to fight this back. And hopefully not lose a villager. Now it is good here for, for uh, Margu. Is that it doesn't look like a villager will be lost. And you've had food income here at least. But I don't think this is exactly how Margu would have wanted this to go. Margu cancel your militia. You're not on gold yet. I think Margu's whole plan kind of got rattled there a little bit. And I don't know if man-at-arm attack would necessarily work well. 
Now, what did Nikov do? Uh, this is this is the standard build order, right? Pretty standard clean build order we've been seeing a lot. Made the militia, went forward and was aggressive. We'll probably remember that there's a weak villager over here. Has come in on this side now, found two villagers exposed. And just look at what this attack has done to Margu. And Margu has pulled all the villagers. Margu very frustrated. Does have the camel scout with the Gurjaras. Does have the militia. Will have to play defensive with the militia. Nikov is just clinical. Clinical with his builds. Clinical with his timing. And if Nikov sees this, he's going to be like, oh, you want to take that fight? That's perfect. I'll take it. Okay, so I'm a little sad. Um, I'm a little sad because I wanted... I thought the build order was so good, but it got punished a little bit there. Margu is going to use the militia to clear this up, so doesn't have to worry about that as much now. And has the archery range. Now let's look at Nikov. Now again, this Civ is more understood because it's essentially what Indians were before with some tweaks. And uh, now we've got a range for Nikov. He goes for his wood upgrade. So it's just going to be a range for both players from here. That said, if you look at the economy as Margu says, get out of here. If you look at the economy, well, yeah, the villagers are cheaper for Nikov. And I actually, I think I still prefer that. This is not bad. This is continuously helping. So, it's funny. Both the games that I've seen Margu play the Civilization, he had some early trouble against the same build order. The exact same build order. But he still ends up having a lead on paper, right? Economically, he has the lead. And he's going to see the range here for Nikov. And he's going to move forward. And now he'll know that he's probably going to need a blacksmith as well because Nikov is going to try and go for fast upgrades here. T90 blind. Nikov cleared the militia, not Margu. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Well, they both lost militia. Get out of here, Greg. Don't call me blind. People don't do that on this channel. Quick walls from Nikov. So well-timed, too, because he knows that this is going to be a bit of a problem. And this is just going to hold this out a bit longer. And this is always a, a feeling of worry. Uh, that starts to settle in here for Margu because look at that. Nikov completes Fletching, immediately pops out with confidence. Fletching on the way, though, for Margu. Nikov isn't completely walled, but that's part of the build as well. Part of the, the design is to harass, but also give yourself time to wall up. Archer Micro very much matters here, and it's better for Nikov. It is better for Nikov. It is much better for Nikov. He got some amazing kills here. He has not lost an Archer. Now, I might have been T90 blind there. Nope, he has the skirms in front. Margu at home. Still looking pretty good, just as a little open right now. I'm going to try and control the game with the army. Yeah, John, do you guys, do you like the ELO? Uh, this was updated, so Capture Age uh, updated. I think they had to update normal Capture Age for anyone who uses it, but I have a special version, right? And I've been asking for this for a while. Um, as of now, I have to manually put this in, but I think it is really nice, and I think I will continue to do that. I, I would personally prefer it to be automatic if they can gather that data, but I imagine that might not be so easy. But yeah, I think it looks good. I think it looks really good. Um, we're also going to have some changes made to this area, just to add in a few more details. Um, and I'm just going to toy around with some things that I think might make it better for me and better for you guys. Hmm. Hey, Nikov's hiding a stable back here. And if he can whittle down... Oh, this is so smart. If he can whittle down these two archers... And now Margu is going to be like, why did he delete that? Why is he doing this? He could whittle down those two archers. It could be a problem. And look at Nikov. He's like, okay, he's running away. He thinks I'm chasing him. I'm not chasing him. I'm running right to his base. God, Nikov is so good. It's just like the decisions are so consistently perfect with the situation. And now poor Margu is, is doing the right thing and is thinking, well, he might be coming to me. Let's wall. And Nikov's going to get here before. Nikov's just so good. He is so good. And this could lead to multiple villagers going down. He's going to... He's also... He knows this one's a free kill. He wants more. He's hungry for more. So he sent this one away 
so he can get more and is going to get that one is going to get this one is going to get probably these as well and while this doesn't necessarily mean it is gg i think a lot of players end up calling it in these positions because well they're up against nikov and they know what nikov's capable of and with nikov being nikov it doesn't really leave you with a lot of confidence right here let's put it that way <laughs> Now, Nikov did spend food on all that. Nikov now thinking about the next age. Added a lot of farms at home. Still looking for vil picks. But you don't. what you don't want to do is you don't want to lose your whole army to get a few more vils. You already killed vils. You don't want that army to come over to your base. And Nikov gets another one, though. And, I mean, his micro is good. His macro is great. Margu still has lots of resources. Still has lots of armies. There's still opportunities here for Margu. Things have just been a little painful on the villager front right now. And oh no! <laughs> Please don't tell me Nikov's gonna escape with this army. Quick, house wall! <laughs> okay, great job from Margu. That would have been frustrating. Guys, Margu is still going to click up to the next age. Also, I wish this thing here was not default. I have to talk to them about that. I don't like the alerts of when someone's being attacked. I'm picky. Did you guys know that? That's right. I'm picky. But I'm picky for you, okay? All my pickiness is for you. Mm, okay, Scouts is getting an attack in after the rest of the army was cleared. I'm sure Nikov is looking for weak villagers that maybe weren't finished off earlier. And and Margu's still up. Still up with a decent uptime here. And still has a lot of army. So Nikov kind of knows that's a problem too. Now, I don't know how much we credit that to Margu's normal macro or how much this brought in. I really wish this would say how much food it's contributed to at this stage. But I'm sure someone could maybe figure out the math on that. What, 20 minutes now it's been? Let's let's just say 18 minutes. There's been eight turnables inside of that mill. Why didn't he tower? Honestly, there was never really a position there where a tower felt natural. When the army started to come in here, he would just lose all the villagers if he towered. And then by the time the army was over here... He already had army at home, so he felt like he could just clear it. Nikov is gonna go for the unique unit. What? Let's go, baby. Also, capture age is glitching a little bit. Sorry about that. Okay, so the Hindu Hindustanis, who I continue to want to call the Hindustrians, which is so stupid. My brain is just not working properly. The Hindustanis, guys, they have a unique unit, which is anti-archer, okay? So, like, I think this is an Indian rework, and I think, oh, they're going to make camels against this. But no, not anymore. They've got a new unique unit. Nikov's going to fall back. He needs to drop this castle like it is hot, though. He needs to go in fast. Damage control. Nikov also sneaking out an army that I don't think Margu thinks will be made here. Now, Margu sees this. And Margu, I don't know how much he knows about that unit. I don't know if he's faced up against it, but it looks like that castle is going to go up. He should go for Vil picks. Nikov should try and dodge. This is actually incredible from Nikov. Well played. And okay. Now at home, we have the university for Margu. So Margu is committed towards crossbow. That is our meta, okay? And I... Yeah, look at this. Margu just said, sec, have to check your unique unit. They laugh. Margu says... Here, I got you. Everyone watching with kids at home, I got you. Ready? Counter arch. Thank you, 14, which means start the game. So, so Margu just checked and is like, oh, no! It counters me. Also, I'm really happy. I want to say thank you to the devs for adding something else to counter. Like, something that is maybe realistic, maybe not. I don't know. To counter a bit more archer play. Now, it is a unique unit that has to be created from the castle, so it's harder to get to. Um, but I just, I'm happy we have that. I'm not the biggest elephant guy. I know there's a lot of elephants with this expansion. I'm not the biggest camel guy, so, you know, this expansion unit wise never had me like, woo, until I saw this thing and I was like, you know what? This is pretty freaking cool. So we've got, with one upgrade, we've got four pierce armor, which isn't actually that good. And now that Ballistics is in, Nikov could have some big economic problems here. So Nikov's taking losses. 
And this could be... Oh, God. He's not taking losses because he's dodging the shots. Nerf Nikov. But, um... Yeah, anyways, we get to see this unique unit at play, and let's see how it goes in the open field on Arabia. I mean, if it gets to five Pierce Armor in Castle Age, it honestly doesn't... Like, five Pierce Armor against a crossbow that does seven damage? Doesn't feel that insane. And Margu's economy has recovered here nicely. And Margu's gonna add the second town center now, as does Nikov, of course. But Margu's got a lot of army. Now, chat, if you would be so kind, if someone could tell me the cost of this unique unit, because if I recall it, it's quite cheap. And I think cost is an important thing to talk about. I think you can make a lot of these things. And I think the, the Gurjaras, their unique unit is the Ratha. I don't know how the Ratha would really perform. You know, it's a part melee, part ranged unit. And so... I guess, in theory, you could go for melee. You, you could switch it over with the Rathas, but... 10 food and 2 gold, really, Thomas? I'm dumb, but I'm not that dumb. Is it 30 food, 45 gold? Okay, so it, it cost-wise, is kind of like an eagle. I think Spirit of the Wall said it's like a mix of an eagle warrior and a Huskarl, which I'm inclined to agree with. So, I mean, you have to produce it out of a castle, which hurts, but... This was before... We had the final armor upgrade. Granted, there wasn't a lot there for uh, for Margu. Okay, so Margu is now making the Shravamsha rider. And the Shravamsha has this dodge mechanic. Um, it, it apparently dodges shots. And I'm still learning more and more about how that works. But it is a meat shield here. It's got solid attack, too. So I think it's not a bad choice here. And Nikov beginning to realize that maybe... Maybe this unit isn't great to just open Castle Age with. Maybe you need a little bit more. See, yeah, again, since it's not six Pierce Armor, it's five Pierce Armor, you're, you're still doing two damage a hit with each crossbow. So you got, you're doing like 30 damage per volley. A little more than that. But man, I you know, and I'm still unsure in it too. I mean, I'm watching this and now I'm like, oh, geez, maybe it is really strong. Okay, he's going to convert the weak one that he just damaged. More conversions coming in against these things. Overall, the fight's actually pretty close, but Nikov can get his town center up now. What unit do you want to make if you are Margu? Because I think the Wrath... Uh, not the Wrath, excuse me. The, uh, the Ghulam. It seems strong enough for now, but it's going to get stronger in Imperial Age. Uh, also, I think the elite cost is not that expensive. I, I think it's like 900 food, 400 gold for elite Ulam. Nikov really wants his stone secured, and Nikov's going to add some siege now. I like it. Uh, we have monks, crossbows, and the Ulams that were converted here for Margu, who uh, is adding the third TC now. Is 10 villagers behind. Lost a lot of villas earlier. But has had more TC idle time combined with, uh, well, Nikov now going to TC number four. Now, this is where having cheaper villagers, I think, feels... Like, I, I think having cheaper villagers is just so much better than the Gurjara eco at this point. But having cheaper villagers was already, as we see the micro from Margu, that was a great overall play from both players there. The thing is, though, guys, it's like what used to be Indians, what is now Hin Hindustanis... Their cheap villagers were already bonkers before. No one wants to talk about it as like one of the best eco bonuses in the game, but it was a regular occurrence where they would be three or four TCs at 500 food. The civilization would just save so much food. So, you know, it sucks if you're the Gajaras right now, and it sucks if you're Margu because your eco is definitely not as good, and you're kind of worried about this unit you don't fully understand yet. And so Margu is just going to back up, make some barracks. And yeah, I think that's your best play. I think any form of decent melee, so maybe long swords is your best play. Guys, what's the best civ of all four new civilizations? Which civilization do you think is going to be the best? I'd like to hear your thoughts. I've gone a little back and forth. I think 
the Hindustanis are going to be the best. I think they just basically improved Indians. I think the Hindustanis are going to be the best. They have cheaper villagers. They have a unique unit, which is anti-archer, right? Their camels now attack faster, and they get the final armor upgrade, which they didn't get before. The better camels, in my opinion. And their hand cannons get nine range. They added more range to the hand cannons. I don't know why. They were like, we need one new thing. What can you think of? They're like, well, they already have this bonus. Let's make it stronger. I think this sieve is going to be no joke. I mean, against against cav sieves, they have options with the camels. And then against archer sieves, they've got options with this unique unit. We'll see. We'll see. Big clear up there for Nikov. Nikov is not on the way to the Imperial Age. He is going to go for Armored Elephants. Now, obviously, we're watching Nikov play this Civ, and it looks really good because it's Nikov. These Ghoulims are fast. Now, also, I highly suggest you guys watch the video from Spirit of the Law on this because the way this unit attacks is, is similar to a Kamiok in some ways, but different to a Kamiok in other ways. Like, Kamiok attacks from one tile away, and it's better when you've got, like, a big group stacked because you can hit their whole group when they can't hit you. But the the uh, the Ghulam does like pass through damage. So if there was like, let's say these tiles were were units and this was the Ghulam and this was the enemy, you'd attack from here and it'd like actually damage both. Oh, there was a hole here too. As if things could get any worse here for Margu. There's a hole. Look at that. One tile gap behind the trees. And he's going to try and go for... I, I actually don't know what he's going to go for. These units have made it in again on this side. The raids are going to be insane. It doesn't feel like monks are necessarily the best unit against the uh, the Ghulam. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a melee scorpion in some senses, yes. Kind of. Too bad you can't garrison... Infantry units inside your armored elephants. <laughs> and before you say T90, that doesn't make any sense. There's a lot of things in Age of Empires 2 that don't make sense. <laughs> so. <laughs> I love the castle for the Gajaras. I really do. And we're starting to see the Chakrams. Actually, the Chakram Thrower might actually be a really good unit against what we're seeing here. It's uh, similar to uh, Gabetto. And look at them. Look at them throw those discs. It's not bad. They've got some good form there, too. They could probably play, be really good at disc golf. I don't know if disc golf is a thing where my viewers are watching from, but basically you throw a disc into a basket. That's it. It's like the concept of golf where you try and hit a ball into a hole, except you're throwing a disc into like a basket that catches it. I actually really want to play disc golf now. I haven't played in years. Okay. Okay, this is just... There's so much control for Nikov at the moment, guys. He's got amazing castle spots, amazing coverage of extra stone, extra gold. I can't wait to see the stat increase on this Ghulam if he's going to commit to it. It feels like he should, right? He's got so many of them. He should be getting upgrades, but... He also has clicked chemistry. He also got archer armor. So I think he's going to be uh, looking towards those nine range hand cannons. Nine range is so insane. And I don't even think that's going to matter. I think Margu is going to call it before then. All the monks are going to die. Margu is trying to use the throwers here. Keyword trying. Going to take a lot of chasing. And there hasn't been too many kills. Nikov already has a range here. We'll probably add a few more and most definitely is going to go for hand cannons or bomber cannons or both. Both could be good. Xena Warrior Princess is really just a chakram thrower in drag, says Greg. Well, thank you for that, man. I'm going to act like I have a clue of what you're talking about because I'm totally not a sheltered human. Well, Margu... Trying to learn this sieve. There's Shatagni now that they didn't change the name of that tech. They just changed what it does. It doesn't give hand cannons plus one range. It gives them plus two. Um, now they are... These things are probably really good at killing the siege. I actually played with Chakrams against, uh, against siege elephants and elephant archers. And they were fairly strong. 
but the hand cannons. The devs have gone wild with hand cannons over the last year and a half. And a lot of that is due to Nikov and, and due to people like myself who've been saying they're just they're a useless unit. We've had four separate buffs, and now we've got hand cannons with plus two range from the Indians. Or, ah, sorry, Hindustanis. It's going to take me a bit. Now, what Nikov needs is more than one range. Like, that's kind of bad that he's only producing out of one range here. Um, he could lose his castles. You know, there's a chance that maybe he could throw a little bit from this position. Yeah, Nikov famously... So, there was a post on the forums, the AOE forums, uh, like two years ago. And this person went on a rant. You ever see a rant after someone loses a game and they get salty and they say a unit's broken or a sieve's broken? Anyways, this low elo guy was ranting about how hand cannons are OP and about how, like, obvi obviously guns are going to be better than archers and they made it too realistic. He, he, he went on and on and on about how hand cannons were OP and it was, like, regularly seen as one of the most niche underpowered units in the game for the cost. <laughs> and so, I don't know who it was, but it was, like, two years ago. Anyways, Nikov thought it was funny, and they play, he played in a tournament, and his team name was Hand Cannons OP. It was in dedicated, uh, a dedication to that user who complained about Hand Cannons, <laughs> which I thought, I thought was funny. He didn't, it's not like he told the guy, he just thought it was so funny he named his team after that. Anyways, Hand Cannons are going to be very OP with this Civ. I faced up against these Hand Cannons uh, last week when I was doing some testing. Hand cannon, bomber cannon with the Hindustanis combined with everything else? Like, hey, arena fans out there. Fast imp, hand cannon, bomber cannon? Could this even rival Turks? I don't know. But feels like it'd be pretty strong. Nikov looking good there. Just dominated that game. And I thought it was funny. Margo just didn't know. He, Margo had no clue that that unique unit was anti archer. And then he was like, oh, crap. <laughs> It's pretty cool to see players, you know, learning that stuff uh, live as we as we watch them play.